Podcast. Welcome back to the No Bonds Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Um, welcome back, episode two of the No Bonds podcast. I'm Ben Beck, here with my co-founder Jim Bodie, also with uh, Matt Maurizio, financial advisor extraordinaire. Do you want to plug your social media handle again? Sure, at here? Matt Maurizio, <laughs> at Instagram, <laughs> at Matt. Yeah. No, but I um, uh, want you to know to rate, comment, um, subscribe. email, subscribe, email us at invest. I keep saying that, not invest, but so, uh, social at beckbody.com. Yeah. Any and all questions as we go through these podcasts, the whole point in us doing this is to you know, kind of peel back the onion with respect to everything that's going on in the financial industry, in particular with your own individual and financial planning and investing questions. Send us an email, ask the questions. It can be anonymous and um, um, we'll be covering all kinds of topics as we move through these over the coming weeks. Uh, today, is about finding or how to find yeah. a financial advisor. Yeah, so I get asked this a lot, uh, or just the topic of conversation comes up a lot, and I wanna pose a question to you guys, we can all weigh in. Um, it comes from like a diff few different angles, but we'll say there's there's the school of people who, who don't know what they don't know about investing and how to manage their money, but are uh, emotional and scared to talk about it or, or even mm -hmm. approach that. So they don't even know what to look up to figure out who's the right person for me. So they end up just taking whoever the first person referred to them is. And then there's another per the other camp is that, yeah, I'm a, I'm a busy entrepreneur. I'm a founder. I have a ton going on in my life. I know I, I'm not going to do this myself. I got to hire somebody. If I had four hours, I could do my research, but I don't want to. How do I find the right person without just investing so much time that I should just figure out how to do it on my own? Mm. Yeah, that's, 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 I think that's part of the problem too, is people get a little bit nervous to talk about money and ask, who's your financial advisor? Well, that's the first thing, right, is that people don't, um, well, not, not people, I shouldn't say that, but, but certain people when they're in conversation about something they're not confident talking about, yeah. they won't ask questions. So they do the next best thing, which is they Google it. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're going to go Google, find a financial advisor. Mm -hmm. And it's going to bring you to a place where you enter your email address and the next thing you know is you've got 30 emails from financial advisors from across the country saying, I'm the best fit for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not so, sure that's always the best way to go about it. Right. 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 So what if I do that? If I, if I Google it and I, and I sign up and I say uh, how to find a financial advisor and now everybody's tagging me and they're sending me emails, what do I do then? Come well, back. the tough part about that is, is that... Right, the financial industry is vast, mm. right? So there's just like, you know, there's a lot of advice, different types of advice out there. So it's one thing to search for a financial advisor on Google, but you kind of, you know, if, if, if you're doing that already, you, you don't necessarily know what you're looking for at first, right? right. So you've, I think the first thing you have to do is boil down to something specific, right? Mm -hmm. To whether it's, um, which is a common saving for retirement or whether it's an investment review. Maybe you already have a financial advisor and you don't know if you're on the right track. Maybe the communication's not there. Maybe the level of understanding's not there. Um, but, um, you know, I don't know, Googling and, and trying to find that way. But I also think that, um, you know, and, and this, some folks might agree, some folks might disagree, but maybe asking friend mm -hmm. from a referral standpoint it's like somebody that you maybe are close with similar circumstances and and asking you know not necessarily who they work with but if they work with a financial advisor what are the things they like what are the things they don't like to try to craft your own idea of okay what you know the, a good question to answer yourself is what do i want out of that kind of relationship yep. because people want different things right yep so Let's say, all right, I'm hearing you're either going to Google somebody or you're going to ask people, right? Mm -hmm. Step one, just start talking about it, figure it out. Mm -hmm. So now you have a few names. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you pick? I think finding names is not, is not always the issue. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. now you, oh, let's say you did that though. You asked a few of your close people in your life that have financial advisors you felt comfortable asking. You got their names, 
you Googled, let's say you don't just jump ship, jump ship immediately and go right to that first name you get. Mm -hmm. And you actually want to do a little bit of like due diligence. You got a few names. Now what do you do with them? Yeah, there's a few steps that I would obviously recommend that we do. The first is do due diligence and find out what types of financial advisors are there. So what is that? Okay. So there's a few that were Ben and I started off with a Merrill Lynch that's considered a wirehouse financial advisor, a brokerage firm. A brokerage firm. Right. Um, you have you have what they would consider hybrid, which is kind of in between a brokerage firm and a fee only advisor, and a fee only advisor is is where Beck Bodie is. So you got to determine and understand what the difference between those three types of financial advisors are, because mm -hmm. that really dictates which type of area you personally should be going in. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. why don't we talk quickly about what those three Perfect. are to walk us through those steps? Yep. So the first, a broker dealer. Broker dealer. So um, well, we'll give a couple examples of firms that are broker dealers. Merrill Lynch, UBS, Morgan Stanley. Correct. Um, it's a lot smaller of a pool nowadays right. than it was about then 10 was. years ago, right? But um, those are firms that have wealth management teams mm -hmm. where you can seek them out as they did us when we right. were there, right? Um, spent time at, at the large brokerage firm model. And, um, you know, I look at the brokerage firms as, as essentially the the super Walmart mm -hmm. of everything financial, right? Hmm. I mean, the the... The, you can get anything and everything at these brokerage firms. Yep. And uh, the financial advisors do have some very qualified, good people at those firms. Oh, yeah. um, and each firm, um, each kind of, you know, brokerage firm versus what we'll get into, which is a, a registered investment advisor, which is we are, have different um, ways they charge fees. Correct. They have different um, investments and philosophies. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, in terms of you know what kind of products are available for you, or some firms like us, we don't have products at all, um, and um, yeah, there's there's just a, a, a multitude of professionals everywhere that you need to go through in the in the interview process. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's a brokerage firm, there's an RIA, our kind okay. of a couple options. So what's the difference? Firm. Yeah, and I think really the biggest difference that uh, I think what we need to articulate is. Why is that important to the end user, to the, to the investor? If I'm going to say, I Google names, I got a couple names from my, my people in my family. Now they work at UBS, some name I've never heard of, Goldman Sachs. How do I pick? Hmm. What's it, like, what, about, what, is, what does it matter to me if they're a brokerage firm or if they're an RIA? Well, everybody's going to be different, right? Every individual is going to be different. Um, what I think is something that's talked about a lot out there in the industry today with consumers is folks are a lot more cognizant of uh, fees. Yep. And so that is one distinction between the brokerage firm model and the independent fee only RIA, which we are, is that the, the nature of how you uh, compensate your advisor with investments is different. You know, with a brokerage firm, it can be um, what's called uh, brokerage commissions, which is essentially a transaction by transaction basis, as we all know, of paying commissions on anything you buy or sell. Um, and um, then there's also um, what would be considered fee, where you're charged perhaps an annual fee uh, per year based upon the value of your assets. That's the brokerage firm model. The RIA fee only model eliminates commissions altogether. Um, but I'll stop short of saying, even though we are on the fee only RIA side, where our contract is with nobody else except with the individual client, um, there's still good people everywhere mm -hmm. and there's still qualified people everywhere. So just because somebody may charge commission as part of their business doesn't necessarily mean that that is um, uh, not the financial advisor you should go through. Um, but what it does mean is that you should be knowledgeable about a how you're compensating, what you're paying for your investments, and b the nature of how that works. Is your relationship directly with the financial advisor, or is your relationship directly with the brokerage firm, where there's a mutual fund company involved that's getting compensated based upon the products, the financial advisor? It can get convoluted. Hmm. So the the, the the one part that you just discussed was commissions versus fees. Mm -hmm. 
And a lot of that also comes to transparency. Right. Which how transparent are the fees you're being charged? Because every client should understand any fee that they're paying and why they are paying those fees. Mm -hmm. There should be no questions asked. Mm -hmm. And the other question that I get a lot along the lines of wirehouses versus an RIA model is the word fiduciary. Mm -hmm. And what does that actually mean to a client? And should that be important mm -hmm. to a client that their financial advisor is taking the fiduciary oath? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So the simplest definition of fiduciary is putting your interest as a client above all else. Compared right? to what? Compared to a best fit, compared to what makes sense. Right, right. So, yeah, so, so right, because it, it's, it's a simple phrase or a simple sentence, yet the reaction is probably, well, isn't that how all financial right. advisors? That's the supposed to be. Uh, right. That's the way it's Some supposed to be. It's like, like I'm coming to you, I'm paying you money. Aren't you supposed to put me, my interests above all else? And, um, Unfortunately, in the financial industry, is that's not always the case, and even you know different types of firms, brokerages versus IR, uh, RIAs, um, they have different levels of um, uh, call it suitability yep. or call it what's the word I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. But um, 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 <coughs> um, but from a fiduciary standpoint, we have a, a requirement that the advice that we provide is a uh, in the client's best interest. On the other side of the coin, which is many other firms out there, like brokerage firms, only have the requirement that the investments that are to be recommended need only be suitable for the client's um, um, uh, portfolio. So there is a distinction there, mm -hmm. right? There is a clear distinction between best interests versus, okay, well, suitable. And we can get into the complexities of those differences, but um, but another thing comes to mind for me is is yeah, fees are definitely important. But back to your original question, Matt, about you know, okay, so you find those two or three financial advisors and you go and sit down with them. Should that first question be about fees? I don't think so. No. I think that first question should be, what is it that you, as a financial advisor, or you as a team, or you as a firm, what do you bring to the table for me? As let's say hypothetically, you're a um, you know you're a, a, a 45 or 50 year old investor that is looking to do retirement planning or college planning. What is it that you can explain to me as a financial advisor that uh, can describe? Okay, in my current circumstances, how do you? How do you look at the world? What's your philosophy on how I, as an inv individual, should be investing? Mm. And that needs to make sense to you, right? That's the biggest thing is that there's so much out there, there's so much noise out there in the financial industry about this product or, or, or this advice, but um, not a lot of clarity. Yeah. So it sounds like we're saying two things. Is you should always understand what you're paying for, mm -hmm. but probably more important than understanding that, you should be understanding when a financial advisor makes a recommendation, what they're doing with your money mm -hmm. at all times. What is the process that they're going through mm -hmm. when they're making a recommendation for each individual client? Yeah. And we all should understand that. Right. So it makes sense to me that that you need needs to the investment strategy needs to make sense or what they're doing needs to make sense. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest hang up will be if I'm gonna follow that that path and say, okay, I'm gonna search for names. Now I'm going to go and do my homework and sit down with these people mm -hmm. and I'm going to ask a question. I'm going to be fed probably stuff that I either want to hear or don't really understand already and it's not making sense, but it sounds like they know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. So there's, to me, I think going to that fee only advisor kind of is like a, a, a guard against your, your money potentially not being invested with your best interest because as a fiduciary, which we've discussed 100% of the time, that decision needs to be made with their best interest. So maybe a filter. So it's not filter. Filter. You know, it, it right. filters out, you know, and, and again, not to say that commission-based financial advisors are all out there to do bad things, but from a decision-making process right. for an individual who's coming and saying, I, I need advice or I need advice yep. and, and I need investment help and I don't know where to go. So I'm interviewing these people. I think the plausible way, Yep. is to filter, for lack of a better description, filter out those advisors that, that 
aren't as explicit or transparent mm -hmm. yeah. with respect to how you compensate them or the firm for investments. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. yeah. So, so the question is, are you a fee only advisor or are you a fiduciary 100% of the mm -hmm. time? Right. right. That's mm -hmm. what you want to ask mm -hmm. because there are, because the investing world is so good at being confusing. There are advisors that are fiduciaries sometimes. Right. right. So that's right. a challenge. So you want to ask, are you a fiduciary 100% of the time? Okay. So you ask, you ask people, you gather names, you sit down with them. Are you a fiduciary 100% of the time? If the answer is no, you can listen to them and they're going to be good people. But if, if your main interest is saving time to just weed out and only find people that are going to yeah. work best for you, then my, my advice would probably be, you know, that's not just cross that one off the list to save you time and go, go down one, the other few. One takeaway, and you may have just said it, but if you did, I missed it. There's a big difference between fee based and fee only. Yeah. We didn't even get into oh, that. We didn't get into that and, and probably not today, but fee based and fee only sound very similar, mm -hmm. totally different. Mm -hmm. So when somebody says I'm a fee based advisor, and if, if you're somebody that wants to filter out, you know, the noise and get to that fee only, ask that next question. Okay, fee based, does that mean you're fee only or yeah. uh, you're fee based? And if your intention is to filter everything out instead right. of, except for the fee only, that, that's a question that needs to be answered because that is, that is, there's huge distinction. Again, we won't get into it today, but, yeah. but uh, so trips up, up a lot of people. So, so after you do the homework, get the names, you go sit down with somebody, find out that they're a fiduciary, they are 100% of the time, I think if, mm -hmm. as long as you feel like you could spend the next 20 years with them and, mm -hmm. and open mm -hmm. up your soul, you know, you trust. Mm -hmm. A really important part of their, your life is your finances. So if you can talk to those people about it, then I said, it seems like find that person you mesh best with who you also understand their investors. And we can make this a very easy process because yep. Beck Bodie are, is a fee <laughs> <laughs> Shameless plug. Uh -huh. Shameless plug. Wow, I see and, you working. And, wow. Yeah, wow. Tell us how they can get in touch yeah. with us. All right. <laughs> Follow us on Instagram at Beck Bodie, B E C K B O D E. Uh, social. Social. And email us social yeah. at beckbodie.com. My, if you want to get to know my life, at Matt Marizio, M A T T M O R I Z I O on Instagram. At bbeck33 is my Instagram handle. At J Bodie, B O D E. 71. Jim, is that a new Instagram handle? Brand new since oh, the last podcast. Good, good. Can't wait to see your first uh, post. <laughs> but actually, this is a this is a this is a topic that um, I think we're gonna cover yeah, more uh, in depth yeah. as we move along here because there's there's a lot of different directions, a lot of there's a lot of different areas within the topic that mm. I think we we uh, can and need to elaborate on for folks because it's important. I yeah. mean, this is your it's your hard earned savings. Um, this is the direction of your life financially and and um, it, it's, uh, it certainly makes a difference to find the right people to, to help you along that path. Great.